Apprentices, our beloved audience, to another amazing episode of the Arcane Archive Presents Cautionary Chronicles. That's right. Back with another stupendous series of stories for you today. Honestly, quite kind of excited as we to be fair, kind of always are. But I mean, it's hard. It's hard not to feel truly excited and just impassioned and emboldened or mm, maybe more so enraged, infuriated and just wrathful beyond belief, depending on, you know, the bay, the particular flavor of the day. But overall, we're just we're just glad to kind of be here. You know, me and Sammy are what well, wouldn't you say, Sammy? Glad to kind of yeah, be here. I, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. You know, just, just being able to kind of read through these things, converse with each other, you know, go off on our just needless and ain't ramblings and such, and maybe have you guys enjoy the ride too with us of all of these tales of people's um exploits, experiences, and traumas. You know, it just it feels like we're really kind of bonding together over all of this kind of shared, just cringe, just oh, spine powdering cringe. Uh, but you know, with that enough of my just <laughs> embarrassing uh, tirade there, uh, as always, if you haven't already, please be sure to like and comment on the videos. Uh, it helps us out immensely. We appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas for anything and such of the stories we're talking about, maybe some stories that you want us to, to read, or maybe even some other kind of content ideas that uh, you guys want us to kind of talk about. That's obviously TTRPG related primarily. Um, be sure also to subscribe and share the channel, help us out immensely. And with that, Samuel, let's go ahead and dive right in today's uh, stories. First story I have for you today is titled The Female Less Realms, featuring my little brother, his friends, and the old Frogger by H.G. Modernism. I was really close to my little brother when I was in high school. He was the awkward type and didn't have a lot of friends and didn't like to talk too much, so... When I suspected he was having a bad day, we'd, well, we'd play some MTG. Uh, for those of you not that know, that's Magic the Gathering. Uh, we bonded a lot over it, and he really enjoyed building decks for me. So when I left for college, it was pretty hard on him for a bit, but we started playing SWOTOR to catch up. Uh, for those of you who might not also know, that's Star Wars The Old Republic. Pretty great game, honestly love it uh he told me although i guess that's the old republic is actually uh, that's the the mmo version instead of knights of the old republic which was the older like uh console slash pc port version i like knights of the old republic more than the <laughs> old republic but you know i mean old republic is still cool it had some decent storylines here or there i just i just not a huge fan of mmos myself and the mechanics has just never really been up my alley either way uh, he told me he had started making friends with some older kids who played Magic the, Gather Magic the Gathering and wanted me to play with them when I came back for winter break. This is so wholesome. I just love it already. This, 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 this person really loves their younger brother. It's just it a tear to my eye. In college, I joined a D&D &D group and got super into it. And my brother was always asking me questions. I told him for Christmas that I would do a mini campaign for him and his friends while I was back for the few weeks. I spent all my free time not studying for the finals, but instead putting together a super flexible mini campaign, starting with Minds of Fandelver, but with lots of room to veer off the beaten path since I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. Um, but I hoped that regardless, they would enjoy. The whole plane flight home, I was filled with nervous excitement for my first time DMing. And I remember thinking I was glad it was with beginners to hopefully take off some of the stress and pressure. Little did I know. So we met the only place that we could given the weather, the back room of our small town's public library. It was my brother, 14, and three other kids, Sean, 15, Ethan, 16, and Kurt, also 16. My brother had helped them set up and roll their characters and, well, let's just say I had some side-eye rolls, uh, some side-eye on their supposed rolls. But I decided not to worry about it much since this was just supposed to be a mini campaign and I didn't see this getting in the way of the fun. The first session was honestly pretty slow and uneventful as it was mostly explaining rules. The last part had Kurt's elf ranger deciding to go fight some frogs in a lake with his bow. He wanted a roll initiative and I told him that he could probably just shoot all of them as they were all just frogs. 
Uh, they all got into it and purged the entire lake of wildlife. I was confused by this, uh, but also glad that at least they seem to be having fun. Um, if maybe not entirely missing the point of D&D. But either way, uh, they decided to make a giant frog effigy out of all the smaller frogs and began to parade it into the town. And that's where I decided to call the session there. Afterwards, I spent a lot of time that evening trying to figure out how to work the frogs they seemed to be really enjoying into the main campaign premise. I had this idea that a local druid who cared for the area would confront them and lead them to meet the All Frogger, a giant mythical frog who would challenge them to a fight for their frog kind misdeeds. This was way off my prepared material, mind you. However, I knew from the outset that these kids would probably be a bit atypical and just wanted to make sure that they had fun above all else. <laughs> the second session started and they were all super excited. They had snuck snacks and Red Bull in the library back room and offered them to me as an awkward thank you. And I found that to be pretty sweet, to be honest. I had them pick up back in town and told them they were approached by a druid who gravely asked them what they had done to all these frogs and why they created the effigy. They asked me what the ranger looked like, and I think I said something like a, a serious middle-aged woman with a green cloak and a staff. Sean then yelled, I touch her! Um, what? I said. I want to touch her! And then he whispers, Oops. And the other two started laughing. My brother's face turned white as a sheet, and he looked like he wanted to be anywhere else. I kind of panicked because this was not what I was prepared to deal with. So I said, Okay, you reach out to touch her, and she turns dramatically into the old frogger. This was just a disguise. Roll initiative! They had their first real combat experience and seemed to have completely forgotten about the ranger entirely, which it's a little confusing because he says they're approached by a druid, but then they say, but then he switched it to ranger a couple of times, which is a bit confusing, but okay. Um, especially since one of the players are also a ranger. At first I wanted to quit because I felt way out of my depth, but I really wanted my brother to have a good time. I made a decision, and that ranger was the first and last woman they would meet for the rest of the campaign. Okay, I see he is talking about the woman as the ranger, even though she said she was a druid multiple times. Every other NPC after that was mysteriously always male, but they never seemed to catch on and never questioned it, so it worked out well. My brother had a great Christmas present. I got to DM one of the weirdest campaigns possibly ever, and all hail the All Frogger, saver of the campaign. End post. So, uh, right off the cuff, I mean, my personal thoughts, honestly, I just, I'm, I just really love how much this OP seems to love their younger brother. Like this, it just, this is so very sweet and wholesome. It's adorable. And this, it really is. It just feels so nice and good. It just gives you the warm feelings. Like they, they did so much for their little brother, both growing up, it seems, as well as like, even when they went off to college now, they're still keeping in contact pretty consistently and like literally blew off an entire semester of, uh, of studying, probably not an entire semester, I'm exaggerating, but nevertheless, to do, basically to set up this <laughs> this d, &D campaign for uh, their little brother and, and their friends. And that's just, that's beautiful. Obviously though, uh, I suppose it's not entirely unexpected that a group of high school boys uh, kind of just went straight psychotic murder hobo-esque uh destroyed an entire i guess amphibian ecosystem and made a strange effigy why the effigy why of of the corpses of the frogs um and start parading it throughout town like i mean i guess they're just trying to be as edgy and crazy and and you know whatever is possible uh, you know hormones are flying and raging everywhere who's to say and then obviously when when presented with the first uh directly identified female npc just just yeah just they just fly off the handle they're 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 all, they're still i think flying high on that high of uh, uh successfully destroying the frog menace and being allowed to kind of do whatever um i mean he turned he turned something that that you know, maybe for a family member or someone that you're close to could be a teaching moment, but it's obvious that his sibling, his or her sibling already knew that that was not really the correct way to do things. Um, but instead of making it weird, 
and trying to teach children that are not yours. Um, they took the approach of just avoiding it and turning it into so like it, it's a distraction. It's distract from this mistake. Let's have fun and not focus on that bit. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like, who are it's... you as someone in college to be saying anything to a bunch of 15, 14, 16 year olds? Um, I mean, it, you know, obviously it's it just, is. It's not your place. You're not their parent. Obviously, if you were in public, like, and if they were doing that to real people, maybe it's a different, you know, it's obviously a different story. But I think this was handled yeah. pretty expertly considering I, this I would never met these kids before. Yeah, I would this agree. Is a, this is already like kind of a, we've had stories and, and things of this nature of like, I'm in college, I DM for high schoolers. Like, it, it can get a little bit tricky. Um the fact that they noticed immediately that their brother was like, I'm so sorry. I don't want to be here. I was going they were to like, say, I'll just like, save this. I'll just yeah. save this real quick. Like they, I mean, well, that actually, that obviously happened. Yeah. With the, with the more overt sexual um, aspect or implementation there, which again, I, again, that I also love the fact that it seemed like, yeah, his little brother or their little brother was not like he was, he was, he had the awareness and wherewithal to kind of be a little ashamed to be like, why would you do that? Like, and that is like, yeah, like I, I would say I, I did appreciate that. It is, again, they're 16 year old boys probably just doing it more again for shock value and that edginess than anything else. And I, I do agree. I think the, I think the OP and the GM, uh, they, they handled the situation, I think as well as they could have. Um, I think it was probably better to just, because again, overall, it was supposed to be something that was meant to be fun. And it was just a one shot or slash mini shot or whatever for the lat, for the couple of weeks or so that they were there. So it didn't necessarily need to be made like a whole entire thing or, or risk ruining the experience because you're going to, you're only going to be there for a short amount of time. Um, yeah. You might as well just make some fun out of it. And... Yeah. You know, just, 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 just roll with the punches. Hopefully it doesn't get too dark and crazy, which it didn't, you know, like it seems like after uh after that initial thing and he just or they just uh deliberately very you know smoothly kind of were just like yeah there are no more uh women in this world that they're ever going to interact with after that it seemed like there wasn't really much of a problem <laughs> after that so it's like hey you know not there's nothing specifically wrong with that as in because again the purpose was to just have fun in this time now, obviously if this was a true long form campaign, oh yeah you, you and this was a continuous be. it would be like it might it might be something you uh, in fact it should absolutely be something you might want to address if it continues um and but you know other than that again they're high school boys they're just they're just going to be stupid and do dumb shit all the time anyway that's just what they're supposed to kind of do unfortunately but also fortunately you know you got to you got to f around to find out sometimes you know so overall i definitely love this story uh, it was just really wholesome and feel good, even even with the little the little sprinkling of of cringe and some distastefulness. Overall, still just a beautiful little story of a, of an older sibling really just loving their younger sibling to bits and just just again trying to have a great time. Uh, with that though, I think that's about all. So let's let's go ahead. Let's move on to the the next one. I think and all hail the all frogger. Go ahead and take it away, Sammy. All righty, our second story of today sorry i'm a bit um, i was a touch distracted there but it's mm -hmm. all good now it's um, all right buddy no worries you got stuff going on it's okay yeah 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 uh I, this is the worst dm i've ever had and her magnum opus by party elephant 2580 uh due to a shortage of ttrpg rpg players and this being a pre this being pre-covid where i had not learned about online discord groups i had one option join the on-campus dnd group at my college there were many red flags about the DM. Here are those that I can remember since it's been a couple years, and I've left all the group texts and Discord servers I shared with the DM. So in particular order, and this is just a big list of shit, which is why I picked it. Yep. One, would blatantly talk crap about other players' characters and how she wants to kill off their characters. Two, would always compare us to her, quote, other D&D groups, end quote, in parentheses, they did not exist. Uh, three would always use I don't railroad as an excuse for letting individual character arcs get ruined by other players when metagaming. A lot of people were new and she didn't do a good job of explaining what metagaming was. Four would also heavily railroad. 
Example, my character had maxed out the piloting skill. This was a Star Wars RPG. We were in a situation uh, where we were in my character ship on the run from the Empire. She didn't roll anything and just had us get shot down. <laughs> um, yeah, which... which gotta I mean, love auto-hits, man. It was, all, it was so classic. You gotta love the auto-hits. Um... <laughs> Kill uh five killed off a character because she was mad at the that the player had to miss a few sessions due to mandatory sorority meetings and then proceeded to brag about it. <laughs> uh six, this is this is the kicker. This is the great one right here. Was racist in and out of game. Awesome. I love Seven, it. Was just it was just blatant, just was racist. Uh both in and out of game. Like, great, awesome. Love it. Uh, Seven used literal Nazi war crimes and Mengele experiments as an inspiration for a horror scene, then defended it, saying, it's okay, I took a class on the Holocaust. <laughs> Good. Yeah, fuck you, you racist bitch. God! <laughs> um, when I said I wanted to run a campaign and told her about the plot, she talked shit about my ideas behind my back and about how it was stupid and probably be boring. I'm currently running that campaign now. My players say they're having fun and enjoying it. Yay! Good for you. As Number nine, should. she said she would not join my D&D campaign unless she got to play this overpowered eldritch horror she had, but not starting from level one. She wanted to bring in the level 20 sheet. Cool. Uh, level uh, 10, when she ran a Call of Cthulhu campaign, she called it her magnum opus. Oh, no. It was 10 sessions of... How many Lovecraft references can I shove into this thing while making the main character a DMPC that did everything for us while she talked about how smart he was? Here's the cool uh, part. It 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 works that you're a racist asshole because so is Lovecraft. Um yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean we try to all, all often try to separate the art from the artist. Oh no, no, no. I just though. but like there are people who are because at least of the writing, and there are people who are a fan of Lovecraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's no, two different I, they're two different things. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Like it's like you like, you know. There's also a difference between a, a, a racist asshole who actually uh, still has talent for imagination, writing, or whatever, and a racist douchebag who doesn't even have that, um, which I feel like is probably the most likely scenario here. Uh, wow. This, jeez, this, this, <laughs> is this person in running for one of the worst people ever uh, award? Is that, is that what we're having here? Because it's, it's definitely, it's definitely kind of looking that way, like. <laughs> uh, uh please continue sammy don't don't let me <laughs> interrupt you anymore no no problem um let's see I a number this. 11 thank you the npcs did all the work for the call of cthulhu campaign we were just there for the ride 12 refused to let anyone else run a campaign 13 ran a cyberpunk campaign Stated that there was an NPC that absolutely loved cybernetics and synths and thought synths were the perfect beings. Said NPC immediately hated my character being a synth. Awesome. During COVID, we ran sessions over Discord. My mom came into my room and I said I was going to be back and muted myself. I was muted for 15 minutes while I learned that my grandma had a stroke and was in the hospital. During those 15 minutes, she decided it was my character's turn to speak. While I was away from the computer, she insulted my character's intelligence, and the NPCs in the scene called my character deaf and dumb, told me not to pull the pity card when me and other players complained. Oh, ran another Star Wars cam uh, 15, ran another Star Wars campaign, pitched the idea of an Imperial Remnant campaign, where we are a bunch of Imperials stranded after the war. We all decided to play low-ranking and cannon fodder characters, like a bunch of no-name store troopers and like one ensign. Highest ranked PC was a gunnery captain. Apparently, she planned for this to be a political intrigue campaign, and we spent a little time this campaign lasted being bodyguards to her Admiral DMPC while listening to her monologue to herself for hours on end. When we complained that we weren't doing anything and felt like we were useless to the campaign, she said, you're supposed to feel useless. The story's not about you. We, when, we, when finally my friend decided, screw it, I'm running a campaign, and she joined as a player, she spent the whole time complaining about his planning, writing, and how she would do things differently. Why'd you let her join? Um, yeah, most of this happened within a span of a year, about three or four years ago. And no, I do not talk to this person anymore. I'm about to run a Call of Cthulhu campaign for the OG group, Sans Bad DM, to treat everyone for putting up with that. Edit. I remembered a few others. 18. When a player oh. she didn't like dealt the killing blow to her beloved BBEG, a bunch of her NPCs swooped in with an elaborate scene and killed the BBEG. Awesome. 
19, she was very much anti-device at the table. I can understand, however... Uh, I or I can understand. However, I used my phone to take notes and keep track of my character's abilities and look up stuff my character would know in lore, like stuff about uh, Togruta. Togruta, since my character was a Togruta. I don't know what that is. She did not like that. Some players had their sheets on the laptops. She did not like that. She also expected all of us to be experts on the lore of whatever sh- world she played. And at number two... It just keeps so I, going! I know. So I spoke... With some, with one of my friends who was in the group, and he reminded me of a few others. Twenty explicitly fudged the role that killed the character in number five. Bragged about fudging the role. Awesome. Twenty one made extremely difficult checks that no player could pass, so her NPCs could shine. Example in Call of Cthulhu, I played an English nurse who had served with the Red Cross for a good chunk of World War One. I. I had her become a doctor and go into psychiatry after the war, which would be her tie into the campaign. We came across a corpse. I rolled to see if I could identify the cause of death. She said I couldn't tell how he died. Her private eye NPC that accompanied her then pointed out how obvious it was that he died of a gunshot wound. I'm not sure how a World War I nurse would miss a gunshot wound, but go off, I guess. 22. She would constantly, consistently talk about how cool stuff she had planned for us, and if we suggested something fun, she would say that she'd include it, and that it sounded like a great idea. Usually we get skipped, or the moment you search by one of her NPCs... Then when we'd actually laugh at us and go, well, you didn't think that was actually going to happen, did you? Uh, 23. Forced a character into a relationship just to cuck the character in the relationship they didn't want to be in. <laughs> how, how, Again, how, I don't... I, why, do, how, why don't people continue? How, how, I was going to say, how, how did this last for a year? And how how would you allow her into any other group's or campaigns, or any, like, like, how did you not immediately cut contact with her after all? Like, she literally, she just outright states all of the worst attributes of herself, the way she behaves, like, proudly. Like, they're an accomplishment. She lied about deliberately rolling and killed off a character because she was mad. She fudged the role bragged about it like what she was racist in and out of game it's one thing if you would be maybe racist in the game because you're just like there are certain races that or even just you know evil detestable characters that are just yeah that's kind of the point you're supposed to hate these characters or these particular races are a little bit more bigoted or whatever again we've talked about this before if you're going to implement those kinds of aspects or elements in your game do so with purpose and reason, and it's fine. But she was also racist outside of game. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? How, how, how do you just let this slide? We're just like, no, oh, she's only a little bit racist. It's it's it's, it's, it's okay. It's all right. What? I mean, everybody's a little bit racist, right? So really, how can we just like? Whoop. I mean, literally, what are some of the comments down here? Yes. Why would you continue to play with this person through multiple sessions? Just right off the top, highest voted comment. Absolutely. OP responds, honestly, I don't know. I spoke with a few people in the OG group, and the consensus was we all liked each other, but no one wanted to be the person to step away first. (laughs) Yeah. This was also in person at a small school. So there was also the fact that no one wanted to cause any drama because we'd all still see each other anyway. Yeah, another comment says hindsight's 2020 and all. It's not hindsight. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have been hindsight. This should be what's the opposite of hindsight? What's the opposite? What 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 would be a term where sight is like it's just clear right now, right in the moment? Like you don't you don't have rose-colored glass. How? How could you have, like, she's making it awkward now, or she's making it dramatic now. What do you mean? What are you talking about? God. Ah! I, jeez, okay. This, I think, uh, you know what's hilarious is that we had such a nice, just relatively feel good even though it might be considered a potential horror story wasn't really it was was a nice feel good wholesome horror wholesome story at the beginning and potentially the rest of these i think are absolutely going to have the effect of just sending me into an absolute tizzy of just god oh my lord 
What do you think, Sam? What do you what do you think about this whole situation? Scenario I mean, again, it, it, all, it, it it still boils down to the aspect of like, why do you keep playing with this these people? Albeit, I do understand like it probably seemed like there was no other option because it's at a club and you can't like walk into a club and kick people out and usurp who's already there. And so I, I get that this is possibly. Probably for a little, probably for a little bit, this was this was. I want to play D and D. I'm going to make the best of a bad situation. And it, they also marked it how they didn't really play it before, so they weren't exactly sure. And like, so maybe they didn't really know fully how bad this was until looking at it later. Um, but it, it's unfortunate because I can I get it. Um, but also like again, I can't see myself putting myself through. I that. just. I don't understand. If they've never played D&D before, I don't understand why they weren't immediately turned off to the entire experience yeah. by having to deal with it. Like, why would, like, if they never played before, if they didn't know much about it, why would they have such a love or a passion for it that they're willing to put up with this shit for this time? Like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I just, again, and this, this, this thing here where they're just like, ah, I spoke with a few other people, like, it's just as well as, you know, we all liked each other. You liked her? Really? You said she was racist out of game two. You said she would like, like, I just, I don't understand. She, she, she would use, I mean, again, here's the thing. Some of these things, like I said, use literal Nazi war crimes and Mangela uh, or Mangala experiment, experiments as whatever as inspiration for a horror scene. That's not, that's not, you know, that in and of itself actually isn't necessarily a bad thing. Again. If you are trying to elicit or establish a very specific thing for a purpose, yes, you are trying to showcase these are things that actually happen for real. And I feel like, you know, that is a fair thing to be like, this, this has happened for real too. And this is a, something, this is a horrible atrocity that was committed. And this is also to help elicit that kind of reaction in the world. Again, you can do that. And it's like, all right, fair enough. But the fact that she's literally like, uh, <laughs> she didn't even say it that way. She's defending it by saying, it's okay. I took a class in the Holocaust. Like, I, she, she talks shit about you guys multiple times. She belittles you. How? How could anybody like her? How could you justify who? Who would like her? Was she hot or something? Is that it? Was she just uh, an absolute smoke show? And that was, that, that was the rationalization you guys had of being okay with her behavior? Because you're like, I mean, she's, she's hot as Fuck. So the fact that she's messed up, you know, emotionally and mentally that I mean, we can we can forgive all of that. Like, what? What? Are, what are you talking about right now? Yeah, make it, it make sense. A bit absurd. It's, it's really absurd. Make, make it make sense. Please. I am begging you. I just I can't like I'm looking at this. OK, another comment says, I know most of these are truly awful, but I could not but laugh reading number nine. How far up your own ass do you have to be to think anybody would allow you to play a level 20 character while everybody else was level one? I'd love to hear literally any sort of justification for that crazy demand. Glad you're not playing with that nutter anymore, OP. And OP responds, I wouldn't even let her play it at level one because she made this overpowered homebrew race that was essentially a great old one in a human suit and could instant kill someone by revealing their true form. Like, I just... I don't, another, another commenter says, with, of course, obvious differences, I kind of had something somewhat close to this happen years ago, but I had it a little bit differently, and I'm not proud of it. Railroading, arrogant, narcissistic, condescending, pedantic, favoritism slash disseminating, DM and PC using jackass. So I ran a campaign that I allowed them to play in, and I completely tortured them. Didn't even give them a second chances on some dice rolls or anything. They eventually got so pissed off about it that they slammed the table and yelled, why the F am I even playing this game? Me and one of the other players in Houston also yelled, how the F does it feel? And when they tried to say that it was somehow different when they did it, I kicked them. Apparently, the other players told a bunch of people how it went down, and then this person suddenly had a really hard time forming a group after that. I feel really bad about that part. Why? On the other hand, I have a hard time justifying feeling bad. Thank you, because they still wouldn't change the behavior afterward. Like, again, we just said it. If someone's going to F around, let them F and find out. Let them have the exact reward, the exact consequence of their choices and actions. It is what they deserve. It's cause and effect, literally. Like, why why is this hard to understand? This is not a difficult or or, or or what do you mean you feel bad about that? Like don't 
it's good to have empathy. I'm not saying that, right? It's good to have sympathy. It's good to have empathy. It's good to be able to look at people who humanely, right? But again, there is an absolute limit to that too, because now you're also being ridiculous about that because it's more, it's less necessarily about it actually being deserved or earned and more so you just feeling bad that you affected something or someone in a way or whatever. It's like, Again, and that, and that it, it almost comes across as being selfish at that point, where you're just like, eh, something bad happened to them kind of tertiarily or as a result of what I felt, so now I feel bad about that. It's like, you're going to have effects on things around you. It's literally just the laws of nature. Yeah, it's just how it works. And you cannot feel bad, especially, again, this person is the only one responsible for what happened to them because of their choices, their behavior, their decisions. Stop, oh. stop taking that onto yourself, both for better and for worse. Because again, that is you being more selfish or self-centered, thinking, well, this is me. I did this. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Stop it for yourself as well as other people. Please. They deserve what they got here because of what they chose and then continue to choose. Because again, if they maybe change their behavior... I think odds are they they maybe would have been able to to remedy the situation and actually gotten back in the good graces of at least some people and had another chance, but they didn't. So stop it, please, people. Anyone who feels like this, again, yes, it is good to be sympathetic. It is good to be empathetic. It is good to care. It is good to be aware of that. Absolutely. Self-aware and self-reflective always. But there is also a limit to that. Do not go too far. Where again, you're a narcissistic, ignorant asshole who, who is completely unwilling to self-reflect, but it's also just as bad to be too self-reflective and too self-critical uh, and 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 bombarding, right? Because then yeah. you, you destroy yourself. Get to that that medium, that balance, that happy medium please <laughs> like again that's what the the op literally responds to this and says like you know me and another player were tempted to do that but we felt it would have been too mean too mean honestly i still don't want i still want to do that and i have a one shot or something that's just horrible but i honestly hate that behavior so much i don't think i could copy it you you're you're the frustrated one today <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move on let's move on yesterday was my turn today it's your turn let's 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 continue let's continue on next next one this is also gonna fucking blow me away this is hmm. this story is titled the session with two nightmare players by okay caregiver 2485 also this is quite long so i apologize for that uh really quick just an essay trigger warning for anybody I would like to precursor this by saying, at this point, I had played three sessions of D&D 5e over a year. I would also like to say this is my first time meeting this friend's party for all of us, or friend's partner, excuse me, for all of us. This happened just over a year ago. Me and six friends had arranged to meet up and start a campaign. Out of these six people, four of them I had played with before. Three of them, we had started a separate homebrew campaign a month before, but we left it there and started anew. The other guy I had played in a different group with the year prior where we played a test D&D session with two other guys. Out of the other two people, I kind of knew one of them but had limited interactions with him. And the other person, aka the nightmare player, I had never met before. So one of the group was going to be the GM, we will call her Rose, and she had planned a homebrew session to play. However, the literal day before we were supposed to play, Rose said she could no longer host or be the GM, but could still play as a character or player if someone else would take over. <laughs> that already, that, that already just, ooh, that grinds my gears. I took over the GM role and another player we will call Jamie hosted us. I decided to very quickly prep a first session and use the Lost Minds of Fandelver campaign to do this. I took a few liberties and decided to alter a few small things here or there to fit in six players and to add in some of my own personal ideas. Love that. That's great. Absolutely. I would highly suggest everybody do that, right? Try your best maybe not to run any module, just, just as modules written, you know, add your own kind of flair and flavor to it. It'd be great practice. Get into it. Anyways, we all commune at Jamie's house, and something I decided to do was let everyone build their characters out of Lego minifigures parts I had in a tub. 
That's so cute. I love that idea. During this, Jamie, during this, Jamie and another player, we will call Matt, found an orb-like piece, which set off a little joke, and I decided to include this into the campaign, adding this idea of a cursed orb that would corrupt whoever owned it. This will come into play later. I don't like that idea. That is not, I, mm, I don't know. Again, it just has so many possibilities to elicit. Um, continuing on, two of the players were late arriving. And this was the nightmare player and her boyfriend. They even started telling us it was because they woke up late. And then the nightmare player started telling everyone, again, I repeat, none of us had met them before this, that they had woke up so late they hadn't even brushed their teeth. What the F? I don't, I don't really see that as being like a, a crazy statement to say, but okay. Uh, not like a super confidential or, or personal thing. So we start playing and within the first few minutes, the nightmare player, we will call Yaz and their partner, who we will call David, asked Jamie if they could vape in his home. He said no, but they could outside. This then set them off and every few minutes they would get up, leave, go outside to vape and come back. This meant we had to keep pausing, which caused problems as we didn't have a massive amount of time to play. And as we carried on playing and got through the first encounter, which was probably mm, around like 10 minutes in and only lasted a short while. After this, Yaz decided they were hungry and asked their partner, David, if they wanted to go to the shop over the road, to which he agreed. They asked if the rest of us would like to go and we all said, no, we wanted to play D&D. They then said they were going to, sh going to the shop and said, we were going to, and we said, and the way he structured this is really difficult. They then said they were going to the shop. We then told them we were going to carry on without them due to the limited time that we had. Yaz and David then left, Yaz leaving completely barefoot, which struck us all as weird. Not Again, it's not actually that weird of a thing overall. They then return, and at this point, the others had advanced down a narrow path and fought a couple of orcs. Then Yaz and David returned, and I joked that they had slipped away to get freaky with each other, which we all laughed about. They eventually caught up and entered a dungeon altogether. Why are you saying that? Didn't you just say you didn't know them at all? Why are you making jokes about them engaging in sex? Like, okay. <laughs> now I feel like now he's opened up a whole can of worms now with that. Shortly through their way into this dungeon, David's character died after taking a lot of damage from getting ambushed and falling down a chute after rolling a nat one for acrobatics. Again, also don't know if I like that. And maybe it feels maybe slightly retaliatory, maybe, or punishing, which I, it's not like I don't understand because I would also be exceedingly frustrated with their behavior uh, at this point as well. It would be aggravating. But I don't know about just, you know, killing them because of a nat one. That's that's a lot. This is when his partner, Yaz, went up to his body and decided they wanted to skin it and wear his skin like a coat. This was told to me, and I was not asked if this was okay at all. I kind of just chuckled this off saying, oh, er, okay. This is where they started to creep me out a bit. You just, why, uh, why? We then let David make a new character and we introduced his character after they left this small dungeon and said he was someone who was trying to hide in their cart. All of a sudden, Yaz and David's character were now instantly in a relationship which I just warily agreed in to accept uh, and hope that this wouldn't cause any further issues. This, however, is when everything went to total shit. The group had to then ask around about some stuff and Yaz decided David was not allowed to talk to any female NPCs and that they would kill their, uh, would kill their player character if David did. At this point, I had had enough. I just kind of went whatever as I didn't feel like I knew this person enough to call them out and ask them to calm <laughs> down at all, which doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. It doesn't matter if you know them well enough. You're the goddamn GM. You are supposed to be able to manage and control the game. Now, if they're going to act up and start whatever, like, you know, in someone else's house or outside of the game, it's like, okay, whatever, I guess. It's not, it's not your house, but it is your game. It's your world. You're supposed to maintain. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Yaz then kept making joke after joke about their character engaging in sexual acts, which we all found really unusual. You were the one who brought it up first. You literally, like, 
incepted the seed into their minds and let them know it was okay to start joking about that. What are you talking about, OP? Trigger warning, during this session, they also came to a point where they were facing off against a few orcs. Yaz decided they were going to have such crazy, ridiculous sex with an orc, it would either scare them into running away or just outright kill them. I tried to put a stop to this by saying, oh, well, these orcs are all celibate and don't engage in any sexual acts whatsoever. But they then began to beg repeatedly to do this, to which another player, Rose, who was also supposed to be the previous GM, also joined in to beg for me to let this happen. And I just basically pushed through and let Yaz roll, to which they succeeded. And I said the orc ran off after that, and that was that. This really brushed me the wrong way, and I felt very uncomfortable after this. Uh, again, that is some, yeah, that, that shit is some of the most ridiculous shit I've ever freaking heard, ever. And the fact that you allowed this. And, but again, you also are kind of, I feel, responsible because you're the one who basically led into this sexual aspects of this by making a joke of it, of it at the top. Like you, you again, you open Pandora's box, OP, I can't help but feel. And then you just keep letting it happen. You keep letting it escalate. You're not putting a stop to it. And like, like, why would, okay. The whole, the controlling behavior over their partner and constantly leaving the vape continued throughout the whole session. But it became a little more toned down as I started to restrict them now as I thought that they were going too far. Okay, okay, all right, okay, cool. You're putting your foot down a bit. You're growing a pair. All right, we love it. We love to see it. After this session, I said we are all about that. I said something about playing seriously, and they all agreed. However, Yaz then left the group chat before session two, and David then said that Yaz just didn't want to play with us anymore, and we accepted it. Cool. Hey, look at that. Kind of, I guess, worked itself out. Wonderful. Look what a little bit of just open communication can maybe accomplish. Hmm? Fantastic. Now, if you think this is where the story ends, oh boy, you are wrong. God damn it. Why? We move on to the second nightmare player of this session, Rose. It turned out the reason Rose could no longer be GM was because she and her boyfriend, a player in our game, who we will call John, oh, lovely, had been having some relationship problems and were on the very edge of breaking up. They had had a massively toxic relationship, and during the whole of the session, Rose kept making problems between her and John, causing constant arguments with him and constantly making it everyone else's problem. This pissed John off a lot and put him in a very, very sour mood, causing him to just not care about playing anymore. So how, how did this even happen? How, how did this group even begin at all if, this, if all of this stuff was like, I don't even... And why, again, if she stops being the GM, what, why does she still think it would be okay to be a player? How? Rose would also begin to make weird sexual jokes and beg for their jokes or, or weird actions and Yaz's actions to happen. I shut them down quite a few times, but they were just getting really weird. And yet you let it happen other times. You, you, consistency, OP, consistency is vital in these kind of situations, okay? I get it. Or maybe even just at some point, maybe stopping when you realize, okay, this is getting weird, this is strange, I feel like this is not really you wanting to play the game, but some other stuff is happening. Um, they then decided that they wanted the corrupt orb I had mentioned prior, but this orb belonged to Jamie's character and linked to his backstory, but they still wanted it. They kept begging to either steal it or fight them for it or, or whatever else, causing bunches of problems and just wouldn't stop. <laughs> the first time I let them attempt to sleight of hand they fail. And I told them they couldn't do it anymore, but they just kept asking. And I told them, and I told them now, which they dis, they, they dislike. I, again, I don't know what that sentence was supposed to be. Uh, they then kept trying to flirt with NPCs to get their own way, which I put a stop to several times as well. This continued through the next two sessions of this campaign we played. At this point, we were now playing online and David and Yaz had both left. Again, okay, awesome. Why isn't the other problem player leaving? Rose then started to tell me that Yaz had been saying stuff about our party and the session, which was negative, and started to say that Yaz was pissed at us and hated us and was trying to invite Rose to their own campaign and party where they could do all the effed up stuff they wanted in their wildest, dark, disgusting dreams. I added that last part myself just for, for dramatic effect. I felt bad and had no contact uh, to Yaz, so reached out to their boy. Why? Why do you feel bad? <laughs> Why are you trying to do this? Why just let it go? Let sleeping dogs lie. You were out. You were out. You you were free. And now you're trying to pull yourself back in. What are you doing, Opie? 
So I reached out to their boyfriend, David, and sent an apology saying, I was sorry if they felt excluded. I just wanted to play somewhat serious without all the weird sex stuff. And that if they wanted to still play, they could. Oh, my God, I'm hyperventilating. I'm just, I can't, I can't. Well, my no, brain it's, is, it's even better. My brain. Uh, David responded saying, yes, had never said any of that stuff, but had invited Rose to a friend's campaign where they aren't as serious. And Rose is just trying to cause unnecessary drama. This was true. Rose did this for months after about a lot of stuff outside of D&D. Also bonus, in a prior one shot a couple weeks before, Rose had stumbled upon a dwarf village to which they seriously asked me if they could kidnap some of the dwarves and start a sex ring of dwarves. I declined this very quickly. End post. You just, you just end the post right there. Cool. Uh-huh. What what happened? What was the resolution? What, what, uh, no, I guess- that's it. I guess by context clues, I guess I guess they kicked Rose by saying like, oh, this was true uh, for Rose did this basically for months after about a lot of stuff outside. No, no, never mind. It doesn't even say they kicked Rose. What happened? Where's the resolution? OP, I, oh, God. What is this? What is this post? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, again, I do not want to just dogpile and bag on the OP, but God. Dang, my friend, there is there is some of this stuff. It's it's I can't even understand exactly what you were trying to say. I don't know if English was your first language or not, but either like there are certain sentences that just don't make it. I can't make any heads or tails of them. And I, I again, I just can't help but be like again. I, I, off the top, I was I was at first just like, oh, op, I I respect the hell out of you. It's like it was very sweet of you. Kind of some of the things that you were doing, you put into all this work, and you you were willing like. I mean, right away, there's a huge red flag with this fucking Rose who's like, oh, I'm going to be the GM. The day before says, oh, I can't be the GM anymore or host at my house anymore. Oh, but I can still play, though. I can still be a player, though. Like, you know, if anyone else wants to take over, I can still play, though. Like, and it's like, okay. But you you stepped up, right? You stepped up and you were like, all right, I can take it. I can do this. And And you did a lot of really great ideas and things that I love right off the top. And then it's like everything just starts to go down hill almost immediately. Yeah, we have the assholes and the problem players, but then you also start to show some problematic behavior, which can then further, again, influence what those players are now going to think is okay. And then you're like, well, that's weird. That's strange. And you're having really weird reactions to seemingly not that bad or even innocuous things. But then you allow the horrible shit to happen to like, Oh, the roller coaster, the roller coaster of emotions and feelings throughout this entire post. What do you think, Sammy? What what is your thoughts and feelings on on this whole thing here? Hmm. I mean the the funny thing for me, it just sounds like everyone's very childish. Um like I, I, I don't know how old these people are. He said apparently they were also all around 17 or so. So well, they're that all tracks. yeah. I mean, it just sounds this just sounds like a lot of drama and bullshit and weird stuff that you I mean, like, it would be worse if they were adults, to be honest. Um, I, the whole vape, like, the whole, you know, I can't sit down for 10 minutes without vaping thing kind of pisses me off, albeit I'm like that. But, yeah, I was going to uh, say, you, you have done it a couple of times here. Oh, yeah, whatever, man. Uh, but but I'm also, like, one of those people that, like, if someone asks me not to, you That's what I'm don't. saying. Just, just, it's not, can, like, can you, you just, just leave it alone for a day, for a couple hours this day, like... Why do you have to constantly yeah. like? Uh, it seems like maybe you have I, maybe a bit of a problem then. Maybe, I mean, fuck. Know? When I used to work uh, in the warehouse, you you didn't get to f- just do that whenever you. They had cameras everywhere. You had to go outside with yeah. your breaks only on your breaks. Wow. Um, it's not that hard. Uh, I'm gonna be real. You could just you know, because there's always like a break everyone takes in the middle of a session anyway to like go pee or whatever. You just go outside and then you come back and. You... I... The weird bringing up like weird, like you know, making sexual jokes and shit like that. You can't make those jokes and laugh about it and then be surprised when someone comes in your game. That's what I'm saying. It's like you you open Pandora's box. You are the one who seemingly established this kind of dynamic first, and then you're surprised when they start getting more explicit. Like, cause you treat it as a joke. So it's like, all right, we okay, we're cool. We're cool to do this then. You know, it's like maybe they would have done that already, but you certainly had like. Urgh, like I, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to just be like you. You, you brought at least I. I can't help but just feel like you at least brought that part 
kind of more onto yourself than anything else. If you had not said anything and they started doing this, that that obviously would have been its own thing. But you literally, you kind of gave the go the green. You light. also, you also the whole orc thing. You just let them do it. That's what you, I'm saying. You push back you, to you, then just you, let them do you it. You anyway. cave to peer pressure, which in shows it gives them more of a thing of being like, oh, so if we just, if we just, you know, if we just push enough, we can get away with anything. Yeah. And it's like, why didn't you didn't even have to say the orcs were celibate? Why didn't you just say that they kill them? Yeah. Why didn't you just say they attack them? I don't know. I don't, I don't really get that either. Like, it's just a very weird. Like, you just like you kind of like I know the story and you're explaining it, and it's like I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on these people are terrible, but like. Also, you just kind of let them do it anyway. So. I don't. I don't doubt. I don't doubt these people are absolutely problem players and were clearly had a lot of damn issues that they did not sort out well. I don't disbelieve that at all. But once again, you <laughs> there's so many things that not only did you just allow, but that it seemed like you almost maybe even encouraged inadvertently. Maybe not again consciously or on purpose, but you just because you were just like, oh yeah, you you, you know you, you allowed it and and inadvertently kept enabling this behavior. And or even prompting it sometimes. And it's like, but then you want to have all this, again, like judgment and shit now about even, again, seemingly the old, even the most innocuous of things, right? Oh, Yaz left the house without her shoes or barefoot across the street. That's not that big of a deal. Oh, Yaz said that they woke up late so they didn't even have time to brush their teeth. So, so what? Like, that's, that is not, it's not like she's saying like, oh, I didn't have time to like, you know, rinse and, and scrub my my absolutely burning groin or or loins or nether regions it's like she didn't it, 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 it's not even like a, a a sensitive topic or anything like that like again i just there's so many this is let's let's go ahead let's 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 move on to the next one sammy go ahead please just take it take us take us away take us away from this i need take me away to the next one yeah i have uh <laughs> I'm sorry, bud. Uh, I have DM slash player that ruined a friend group from Manufacturer Spare 541. I've never played D&D before. I'd never played D&D before until 2020 when a college friend, who I'll be refer referring to as M, invited me and three other friends to join a campaign he was DMing. Everything started off fine. We made our characters and started a fairly normal one-off session. <laughs> My character died right away, but it was whatever. I make a new character and pitch the idea to M. I wanted to play a human wizard that would transform into his rival, a dark elf warlock, at night. No. <laughs> kind of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type thing. Two souls trapped in one body. I don't like that. Uh, Emma uh, Cruz, I, and we, like, that's just a problematic character. I, I mean, that's uh, what I'm saying, bro. Like, just Emma Cruz, these... and we begin doing his homebrew campaign. At first, M started targeting one of my other friends, I'll call it V, who was playing a joke character. A stoner bard. Uh oh. M would constantly shoot down any silly idea V had and would actively mock V, making a vape shop in a fantasy mall, only to then reveal it was actually a ruse by a religious group to recruit people and make them sober, or a time where V wanted to make fantasy SoundCloud, only for him to shoot it down with, well, you can't just, you can't because Audio Sky exists. And kind of, and that kind of shit. It had gotten to a point where V didn't want to play anymore because of that. V later left after sacrificing his character in the last mo last stand moment to save the party. After V left, um, was when my friend and I started being targeted by M. My friend, who I'll be calling S, was the only girl in the group, which led to several weird moments. M had made jokes. I made a joke gnome character named Gorf who would alter reality and would show up at the most awkward moments only to make dumb, unfunny jokes or harass S. Uh, At one point, M God. made Gorf appear and made S's character marry him, which was super awkward and weird to everyone. <laughs> Wait, what? Bring, but we didn't bring anything up to not hurt M's feelings. Oh, great. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't... Um, then at, the end of the, yeah, then at the end of the campaign, I accidentally sacrificed my character due to a misunderstanding, and <laughs> I accidentally ruined my character's and one of my friend's character's arcs. I was so upset I left call. I later apologized to everyone and figured it was water under the bridge. After M's campaign, I began to work on my own D&D campaign and DMing my first session. S, M, S's boyfriend, and one of M's other friends, who we'll call Y, were all players. Y was an experienced D&D player and knew it was my first time DMing and that there were other players who were less experienced with D&D mechanics, so he made sure to tone his character's abilities down so that he didn't one-shot everything. 
That's not really how D&D works, but that's fine. Nope. Some, on the other hand, decide to play a Grung Monk with Poison Touch that would one-shot everything before a player, other players could get a turn in combat. That that's also most... not how that yeah, works. Yeah, it also doesn't make any sense. Uh, when I tried reaching out to M about nerfing his character and just removing the Poison Touch, he got defensive, saying he should just switch characters. When that wasn't what I had said at all. I was fine with him playing the same character, just removing the extra poison damage. Next session, M's character was killed by S's character by accident, having thrown an item at the boss while it had M's character grappled and getting a crit. M was low on health and took enough damage to kill him twice over. (laughs) We all laughed about it, except for M, who proceeded to leave the Discord call. I tried messaging him and telling him that his character wouldn't stay dead because of plot stuff and tried to explain that his character would still be alive, but he kept saying, my characters always die, I should just pick a human. We ended up working out that his character would come back, but he wouldn't have Poison Touch anymore. The next session was the worst session I had with him yet. The party is told that M's character was brought back to life with a magic plot device crystal and that he would be the same but without poison powers. And that they would be going to an amusement park. M decided that his character couldn't talk. Oh, I, think God, this, this again. I think this is stupid, but I still play along. Giving his character a necklace that would let him speak, M's character throws it away. Gave him a potion of speech, his character throws it up. At this point, both my other players and I are getting annoyed. And just want the session to progress. He, he obviously just doesn't want to talk at all. Like he, like you. He, uh, Suddenly, M proclaims that a swarm of bees comes out of his character's mouth. I was not told about any of this before the session started, so instinctively, I go to kill the bees, thinking that they are evil or were left over from when M's character died. M then gets mad just, at me for killing the bees. He's alive. Sending me, sending me a message about how they were going to talk for his character, and proceeds to send me an insect race. I am annoyed that he didn't talk to me about this before the session started. I tell him it's too late and give his character a potion that lets him speak, only for M to change it and say that the potion makes word bubbles appear written in Comic Sans. No, that's not how that works. Why are you you just letting him? Again, this is why I don't. This is why I don't understand. I'm annoyed at this point, but not wanting to fight with him more, I let him. I let I go along with it. He then proceeds to bother everyone I? else in the session, getting I? in the way of people wanting to RP with NPCs. It's just doing stupid shit to get, over, to get out everyone's nerves. During the session, the party finds a little girl who was looking for her dad. And once reunited, I reveal that the dad... Oh, I guess dads in this case were my previous characters, the wizard and the warlock. Mm. See, I'm also getting hints that you're a terrible GM. That's, I mean, this, this is... Uh, everyone uh, sucks. M this gets is... mad and proceeds to start saying shit like, I thought you said no multiverses, and they're still dead in my campaign. Just dumb shit. For context, in my campaign, I thought it would be fun if I had everyone's previous character show up for a moment, just as a little cameo. They didn't alter the plot in any way and only happened for fun callbacks. Okay, fine. After this incident, M started to participate less and less in the session, sometimes just leaving the call halfway through without telling anyone. One night, <laughs> I get a call from M, and I answer. He just kept saying, they're dead. They're dead. Damon and I are dead. Mocking the death of my characters to the point where I started crying. Just hang up the phone. You're, that's a fucking pussy. I don't... God, I hate this. <laughs> After my campaign... It's a fucking D&D character, dude. You don't even play him for very long. Like, I, again, I don't... Like, if you play a character for fucking years and they die... You can have some fucking tears. If you play them for fucking three months and they die, you don't get to cry about it. Yeah, okay, here's the thing. You can, you can, but why would you let him make you cry about it? Why or oh, him? Fine. Whatever. You're, you're then, allowed to cry about it, but I will make fun of you acting. Why, why, why would you allow why would you like you said just hang up the phone? Why are you still friends? Or playing I mean, I, again, or speaking to this person. Not to be that guy, because I, I know that's not how bullying works and all that. But like online stuff, it's really easy. Just shut the laptop. Um, Block them. Yeah, leave. Like everybody does really... it. I mean, so people do it so often for just like engaging with people all the time, right? People do it so often for like, oh hey, you're you know, if you're trying to on either a dating website or if you're just like on a friend's website or if you're just doing. So many people do it all the time. You just ghost people. You ghost them. It's super easy. Everybody I can, does I can, it all the I mean, time. I can give you I pointers. It. I'll be honest. I, do I hate it. ghosting. Yeah, I know you do. I I hate ghosting. It's one of the worst things I think ever personally. I mean, like, but in a sense, it's actually a perfect freaking solution. I don't do it to people I'm close to. Sure. Yeah. That's. Fair. I do it to people like internet people that I don't want to talk to anymore. I just like don't uh, give an explanation. Yeah. 
Uh, well, again, I still personally am like, you know, if I'll just, yeah, that's just my personal thoughts and that's opinions. That's fair. But if, either if way. If you're close to someone, I think it's more respectful. I mean, if you're tell close them. or even just like, I'm still, even if I'm not super close to them, I still think it's just, it's just, it's just a baseline, you know, respect. But if they prove to be an absolute douchebag asshole at that point, go ahead and ghost. That's fine. That's, yeah. It doesn't matter because they have shown that they are not worthy of your personal yeah. consideration and respect it's, at this point. It's like, if you don't plan on interacting with them again, fuck it. Just burn the bridge. Why do stop you it? Stop it. Where's yeah, that just, bridge leading to? It's More so fucking easy. Traps it's so, it goes it's, right to an Iron Maiden. It's, what are you? Look, I, I hate to be the negative Nancy here. It's so much easier to burn a bridge than maintain it. And my mom would be furious, like you know, scowling at me because she's uh-huh. like, "What about people?" No, <laughs> it's easy to fucking burn a bridge. It's so much easier to be mean than to try to be nice. Just yeah, just cut it out of your life. It's really not that hard. I'm sorry I made fun of you for dra- for crying about your character, but it, it is kind of some wish shit. Um, you're letting this person hold this shit over you, and it doesn't matter. Because guess what? You're not playing in their campaign anymore. That character still exists. You can bring him back in whatever the fuck you want to, because it's D&D. It's D&D. Adam, Adam does it in every campaign. I literally do it. Like, just about. <laughs> like, just about every campaign. I'll literally just be like, hey, I have this other character who I didn't get to, like, finish or really do as much in another campaign, and I, I want to try and do it here. You know, like... Adam has two. He has two characters he plays in every game. It's exactly. it's a gnome uh, monk. Yeah, yeah, the gnome monk and, and, and uh, Alistair. Alistair. Yeah, there you go. That's that's it. That's, that's I'll get you to play something else at some point if I run a game for you. But yeah, uh, you know, but you pretty much just play the same thing, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, I don't actually do that. He's no, I'm absolutely. Right. <laughs> no, seriously though, uh, but I I absolutely do still love those characters. And again, if you do love characters, yeah. Bring them back if you didn't get the resolution or the story that you got. Right. If the campaign ends early or whatever the hell else. Don't feel like you can't bring that character back so long as you're able to tweak some stuff to make it appropriate and fit the new setting or I mean, campaign. Yeah, like for context, I, I'm not saying this or just talking my ass. No. I, I literally, in my Tuesday campaign, and we've been playing the same game for like over four and a half, five years. Yeah. Um, That's like four years, four and a half years. I, I've had about. pretty much, I've had that same character has been alive through most of it. I played another character for a while because there's some off screen stuff, party B, nonsense, whatever. Um, so this character is this character is most likely going to die in the final fight. Um, even if he doesn't die, he is beholden to an elder evil god. Yeah, an eldritch gonna, entity. Yeah, uh, not gonna it's him. Dendar. So yeah, I'm not going to let know, him go. And so that character is is the, the, the end, night basically serpent. nice. Basically, yeah. the game the the last battle ends. That character is either alive and in servitude. Or dead and in servitude. There yeah, is no, either way. There is they're... no pleasant ending for this character. I've talked with my DM about it. I'm not going to handle it well as a human being. It's a character I've grown very attached to. Of course. I've, I made all of those decisions on purpose, very Years. deliberately. Yep. Uh, it was all. It was a story that I wanted to pursue, and I didn't know exactly where it was going to go. That is a character you get to you get to feel some type of way about. Something that you've been you've been connected to for a very long time. Well, would, maybe, again, they wrote, I, maybe they wrote. Maybe they wrote for a and, while. And you know what? You know? And that's the thing. But you have the power to bring that back. Yeah. Me personally, as Absolutely. a storyteller, I'm not gonna. That character's gone. There is never gonna be another tier, and that's okay. I'm gonna be sad because he's he's fucking overpowered as shit. But um, <laughs> but and again, yeah. but that and that that's Sammy's personal choice. But there yeah, is that's, that's how I handle it. There is nothing wrong. I'm the at guy all. that's I'm the guy that when your character dies in a session, I'm already rolling up another one. Yeah, it mm-hmm. makes the people See? at the table uncomfortable. See? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Sammy's pati- personal brand of twisted fuck. I, I was the first one you know? in my D and D group to lose a character, and that session, yep. I already had the name class race subclass i mean hey character. like i said don't get me I wrong had the books out and i was writing it down and i have an like, absolute oh, myriad i have like, an absolute what? myriad of backlog i have probably at this point upwards of like 70 characters that i just have like that i'm like i i can bring any we have a problem yeah i mean but being is like even with me right I also have a huge backlog of characters that I absolutely would love to utilize. I only bring certain characters to maybe certain campaigns, depending on the premise, if it works. And if it's like, you know what? I think that this campaign has the potential to allow this character and subsequently for me to really bloom, to have the best story opportunity, right? To have the best experience. And that's what it's about. 
yeah there's a big difference between all of those ideas we have for short campaigns and one shots of like we just want to try this yeah and a character that we're genuinely lore wise and story wise attached to yeah and, and, that's, and that's, has the biggest the best potential and capacity yeah. and for that's, that's the huge that's the that's also the big difference um and but so let's continue. Let's continue. Like, I feel let's, bad. I'll apologize. I apologize. I'm yeah. a little bit mean, but at no, the same it's, time, it's, it's like, again, you, you control this character. I don't you are understand. not wrong that they are kind of putting on some wussy ish. I'm not, yeah. I'll, 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 even me being more the nicer one of the two of us, I will also 100% like, you have, you have control over this OP. Stop letting us. Mm. But continue, yeah. Sammy, please. After my campaign ended, I decided to join M's pirate campaign. Why? With S.Y. and one of M's other friends. I played a tabaxi named Nyanyami. Great. And S played a tiefling rogue. The setting this campaign was in was like a gross, twisted version of a pirate campaign. M had started the session with a video of a scientist talking about multiverses and alternate universes before going, oh, whoops, no more ultimate universes. A clear jab towards me. I hated this campaign. My character was constantly targeted by enemies, and whenever I made a successful roll, there was always a catch. Like, I wanted to pick up a hermit crab on the beach, and I rolled a high enough animal handling roll to succeed, but uh-oh, the crab pinches you and it runs away. He would also put weird scenarios into the sessions, like porno mags were currency, would catcall S his character, had an island filled with fascist bananas. So, again... Why? Why are you playing... Just, just... Why? Why? Oh, okay. Why? S, S and I were saying... That's Owen feel, Wilson yeah. would say... Why? S and I were starting to feel uncomfortable after the second session and decided to try to talk to M about it. He didn't see anything wrong with it because it was all fictional. So we decided to leave his campaign. Oh, so end of session two, you were done. Uh, okay. I then started okay. a more serious right. forward. Progress. Yeah, take, yeah. take it. Progress. We will absolutely acknowledge it. Progress. I... I then started a more serious horror campaign and requested that all players talk to me about their characters and backstory before the campaign started. Progress. Growth. Nope. And the progress is gone. I had messaged him and asked if he was going to join the session that day, and he said no. So I start the session with my three players. Everything is going well until I see M join the call. I'm in the middle of an exposition dump, and then M starts messaging me, messaging me about his character and wanting to join. I have to pause the session to deal with M, and he has sent me a, a character sheet. No name, no backstory. He was a pl- <laughs> playing a character that could turn into a demogorgon on full moons, and his god was an eldritch horror. That was also the um, the moon completely breaking my world's lore he had no name wanting the party to name him no backstory wanting it to be a mystery and give me nothing to work with plot wise he also couldn't stop oh, couldn't talk this thing again it's, instead only casting images into people's minds this shit again the fucking no talking shit and then me you crazy. completely threw away all of the growth you had i was irritated but not wanting to seem like a jerk no or start anything no. i let him join the session no no <laughs> <laughs> only for yeah, only for him to immediately start causing trouble by projecting the image of a sea of blood into the minds of everyone at the tavern. I tell him this backfires, and the people of the tavern want him dead. Later, I'm explaining how a village is terrified because of because a, a creature is eating their livestock, and M sends me a message asking if it's his character who's doing it. I tell him no, and after that, he leaves the session early. This would become a reoccurring issue with him. After a bit, he just stopped showing up to sessions. Over time, we just stopped playing with them and made separate server for D&D without him. I don't want to play D&D with someone who can't respect other players of the DM. As of now, I'm currently DMing a pirate-themed campaign with S and two other good friends of mine and have been having a lot of fun. I do not play with them anymore, and I don't think I'll play with them again. Thank you for taking this long, but why the fuck? Why the fuck? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I just don't understand. No, there's an answer. Why did you even play with this person in the first campaign? They clearly don't care, respect you, your friends, or your time. Once someone shows you how it's awful they are as a person, it's best to just believe them and cut it off. Their response from OP was, it was really difficult to say no, because at the time we all lived in the same dorm building in college during COVID. I also didn't really have anyone else at the time to play D&D with regularly. Um, Someone says... <laughs> Someone replied with, no d d is better than bad d d Someone replied to that saying, this seems to only be true until those are really your only two options. And and I get it. Again, I really I really do get it. Um, but you, you did let that go way too long. Like, you become a problem by letting this happen for as long as it does, is, is the way I look at it. I, 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 uh, I, uh, hang on. I will I will say like Sammy I do also get it again I think but anybody not to this extent. anybody who has ever played we all have that itch and we're like you know what we'll just give it a we'll give it a go 
And there's also, there's, there's nothing wrong, even though Sam will disagree, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of tolerance, with having a little bit of, you know, like, okay, all right, you don't have to fly off the handle at the smallest of potential infractions or red flags, maybe, right away, of course. But there, there is there. I, I just don't get why people can't seem to just find that clear, straight up, just, 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 just meteor sized middle ground. Like you do not keep engaging with a person like this part, like the other person says up there. When somebody consistently shows you who they are, believe them. Please just believe them and respond accordingly. Like Opie says, well, I didn't want to seem like a jerk. How? In what universe? In what of the vast, in the multiverse itself, who in, in any way, shape, or form would make would 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 view you as being a jerk to not allow someone who didn't want, who, who literally told you before they didn't want to play shows up like two to three hours later, whatever the fuck, presents to you this completely ridiculous, stupid, clear, if not joke, meme, or just downright deliberately designed to screw the session up character. Who would possibly have thought you would be a jerk? I'm sorry. To Sammy's point, you were a... F mm -hmm. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say it. But you're a punk ass wuss, OP. I'm sorry. I legitimately am. I don't want to say it, especially like, again, how long ago was this? A year ago? No, 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 no. 2020. So four years ago. <clears throat> so this is, this is like, this is basically this, this was, this was, this happened four years ago, but I guess went on for like a year or two, I think. So you technically, I guess, got done like what, two years ago or so, right? Around there, two, maybe three years or so. I, I hope now, again, I don't want to keep dogging or bagging on you. I hope I do legitimately hope now that you have learned from this experience and that you will no longer tolerate this stuff in any capacity, in any game, in any environment. doesn't matter if you're playing D&D &D or if you're in real life. You will not tolerate this kind of behavior or treatment ever again. But good golly gosh, damn, my friend. Holy crap. I it's it is I I I it it's so hard to find any amount of redeemable or or defense for you because you just you were also pretty bad in this like ah uh, like there like like how how many times can you be a victim before it is just like are you, are you, are you kind of just choosing well, to be I mean, you're, you're like, contributing to the problem. I don't want to be a victim blamer. I don't want to blame victims, but it's like there, there. I can't help but feel at times like there are, there are lines and limits to where it's just like okay. At some point, you have to start making the choices that that stop this, right? Because it's this no one's forcing you into this. No, this isn't a. No one is physically enforcing you or confining you or assaulting you or. You're just, you're choosing this yourself because you're apparently trying to rationalize. It's more comfortable or, or at least it's more tolerable to do this and deal with this than to apparently not and deal with, oh, well, we live in the same building. Uh, and I get that as like a reason to like maybe stick around a little bit, but not for as long as you did, not for as much as you did, not inviting this person to other games that he was not, that they were not a part of until you... You invited them. You brought them into other games for no reason. And then you you were running your own stuff, stopped running it, and decided, no, yeah, I'll join into his game again. When 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 you did that, it went badly, so you started up another game and were able to convince people to play. So you never had to join another one of his games. You could have just ran your own stuff or found another person that, was, that wanted to try DMing. There was no reason to include this person. It doesn't sound like the most of the party also liked this person? I think, I don't no, know. I think anybody did, because apparently they all left multiple of his freaking campaigns. Like, you you joined another one after the first one, after he started screwing up your, can your campaign. 
think I'm just I popped a goddamn blood vessel. I feel it's not like it's like a just 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 I just. I just want to, I just, I just don't understand. I just don't understand why I can't, I can't handle this shit. I can't. It's just, it's, it's killing me. It's killing me to see these people and, and how they just like, they prepare, like, uh, and I don't want to be angry at them because I understand extinguishing certain, you're, you're in it, you're feeling it, you feel, but I just, it is so anathema. It is so incredibly anathema to everything that I am, to my, basically my entire being for this shit to happen and occur to the extent that it did and does. I'm just, I'm like, I just want to, I want to reach through like the screen and just, just, just like, just like shake the OPs or just mm. strangle the problem, the problem entities and players and people just like, why, why, why are, why are you like this? <laughs> Oh, let's move on. So this next, uh, this next post, this next story is titled "A Bad GM in the Desert" by Dramatic Reenactment. Uh, this one's an extra long one, apparently, but we'll see just how long it actually is for ourselves. To preface this, I am not an experienced tabletop player. Oh, no. I've read some 5e books and know the rules. I've played a few sessions, but I've never had more than one session per campaign. Ah, I'm sorry, man. That, that's an unfortunate common thing that a lot of people have had. I've played in five D&D sessions. In four of them, it was a first-time GM. In one of them, the GM was so dyslexic, he couldn't read the rules. What? Wait, what? One of them, the one experienced GM was still the worst I have ever seen. I don't know if he was awful by experience standards, but by my experience, it felt absolutely special in how terribly he ran the game. Good Lord. I have no friends. <laughs> I'm, oh my, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have laughed. I just, that came so out of left field. I didn't expect it. Just, just, just a straight proclamation of, I have no friends. Oh man. So I found the campaign on the meetup website. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, OP. I, I do legitimately, genuinely apologize. That it, you just you caught me off guard with that. I did not just just a blatant. I have no friends. <laughs> like oh, the DM's name wasn't Steve. Okay, wasn't Steve, but we'll call him Steve. Okay, Steve was a gray-haired old guy, skinny with a goatee and a ponytail. Oh no! His campaign had a monthly subscription fee of six dollars. He was making it a pay-to-play game. I figured because it's a more public official group, so I pay the fee, and he invites me on a Zoom call for an intro session. The intro seems fine enough. This is a five E campaign. Steve's party is on a quest through a desert world that he created. He brings up a graphic showing a whole branching set of quests that all led into each other. It looks pretty impressive. He has some interesting rules. He tells party members to describe the enemies in combat so they feel more personal, which is cool. We get to character creation. <clears throat> I have a few simple characters written down to pick depending on party composition. At first, I choose my simplest one since I'm still pretty new. Eric, or yeah, Eric, the legend, human fighter. He says that it'll be hard because they have a player named Eric. Reasonable enough, but the whole point of the character was the reference to... To what? Okay, he cut that off. Also, all characters need to have one-syllable nicknames that they will be called instead of their real name. Question mark? That's fair. So if I choose Eric, <clears throat> he would have to be called Rick. Okay, not doing that. I switched to my half-elf bar that I loosely based off on Kamina from TTGL, named Kamino. Or Kamina from TTGL, named Kamino. His name is Cam now. A few days go by, and I join the session. It's held in the back of a comic shop, and there's a huge table with about 10 people sitting around it, and a projector screen showing a map of the area. Other party members are pretty standard fantasy. 
I should mention all of this is done through D&D Beyond, so there's no room for homebrew. That's also not true. You can absolutely homebrew in D&D Beyond. Uh, human Fighter, Human Warlock, Elf Rogue, Dwarf Cleric, Orc Barbarian, Cobalt Wizard, and probably some others I forget. There's more? How many people did you have in this freaking game? What? There's a reason I don't remember them very well. Me and a guy playing a Dwarven Sorcerer are the new guys. In the last session, the party had their bag of holdings stolen by desert thieves who ran to a town. Today's session, we'll be getting the gear back. They enter the town. It's a pretty large city on a river with a port in a desert. Yeah. I mean, you have a you, de deserts can have rivers. Rivers. That's not an uncommon thing for a desert to have. Steve brings up a map of the city on the projector with a bunch of nodes showing visible locations. Since the bag is magical, the cleric gets the idea to cast a tech magic to see if it left a trail they can follow. He rolls and succeeds. That's not at all how that works in any way. You could have just cast locate object. Uh, you detect the magic. However, the city is so magical that it overloads your senses. You're blinded for 10 minutes. Once again, not how that works at all. It is how it works. It's like, yeah, you cast detect magic. The city probably has a lot of magic, so maybe you might not be able to pinpoint certain things, but you definitely don't get blinded for 10 Minutes, my friends, not at all. OP responds, huh, okay. Steve mentions that they come across an elf and a dwarf arguing in the street, and it takes a few minutes before I realize that that's me and the new guy. How does it take you 10 minutes? Neither of us know anything about each other's character, so we don't know what we're actually arguing about. <clears throat> we end up half-assedly tagging along. I make up something about having history with the gang of thieves. The party decides to go to the docks. In the desert. That's not an uncommon thing for deserts to have sometimes. Maybe there's not a lot of them, but if you have it, if there are cities next to rivers on a desert, they'd probably have docks there. It just kind of makes sense. Where there are several jetties, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm saying that right, or with the gang of thieves, or sorry, with sheds on them. So several jetties with sheds on them. The projector shows a screen of the docks with nodes on each of the sheds showing their interactable the fighter says he's going to inspect the shed on the left there was a lightning or there was a, a lighting trap on the door the entire party takes four damage i think he did make meant to say lightning huh less sure another character inspects the center jetty the screen shows concept art of desert warrior woman a woman exits the door she's wearing robes and a uh the woman is holding a kopesh a kopesh, I say. A sword, Steve says. I admit I can kind of, I, I can, I admit I can be kind of um actually sometimes, but I think if you're working on an Egyptian inspired fantasy desert setting for years, you should know what a kopesh is, right? Yeah. Probably. I'm not going to disagree. A sword is also still technically fine to say. They don't necessarily need to be more specific. It's fine. You should probably know what a kopesh is. Yeah. But again, it's not really that big of a thing. Whatever. Seeing it as a chance to role play, I mentioned this woman as a former gal pal of mine and volunteered to talk to her. This whole time, the party has been mostly talking with each other, and I haven't had many chances to do much. I'm a 19 charisma half-elf bard, so I figure my role is to talk to people. I attempt to make small talk and ask about where the gang has been. She dryly mentions they're hiding in some storehouse on 3rd Street. <laughs> okay. That was pretty easy. Uh, we walk to 3rd Street and find the building. The door is ajar and no lights are on. I think to myself, it could be a trap. The cleric and the fighter apparently think likewise and say they're going to stay outside while the rest go in. The sorcerer and I say nothing. The rest of the party goes into the sketchy building. Suddenly someone from a window above you dumps their pee out the window, covering fighter and cleric and pee. We're all weirded out, but I cast prestigitation to clean them off. <sighs> we stand by the watch. We stand by and watch the Barbarian, Warlock, Rogue, and Wizard explore the building. The projector shows a dusty, cluttered room with a node in the middle and one in each corner. They investigate the center. It's a pile of dead bodies, all wearing matching bandanas. Spooky! Okay. The Rogue investigates one corner. It's a dagger trap. You take three damage. You may now be cursed. What? The Rogue investigates a third corner. It's a dagger trap. You take three damage. You may now be cursed. No save. No nothing. The barbarian investigates the last corner. It opens a secret door. 
Projector shows a house interior from Skyrim with a center fireplace and a chest. Wizard and Barbarian riff about taking some of the meat roasting over the fireplace. Steve doesn't respond. There are nodes on two corners and the chest. After much pain deliberation, the rogue volunteers to open the chest. You find your bag of holding! ba 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 da This session breaks for an intermission. I use the bathroom after the Barbarian player, a balding white guy who was built like a turkey, why I mention that? What does that have to do with me? It was like all his weight had sunk to stomach level and below. Is that relevant? It sit in the worst cloud of BO I have ever suffered, counting the seconds like centuries until I'm finally empty. Why did you, why did you say it like that? The party regroups and celebrates. We decide we're going to hit a shop on the way out to get some food and water. On the way there, Cleric and Fighter notice that their movements are sluggish and their muscles are sore. You've been infected with leprosy! It happened when you got splashed with the pee. <laughs> oh, kill me now! Save me! Anyone, please! Oh, but I cleaned them, I mentioned. They still got infected, GM says. Uh, Steve... God. Steve explains that the party should always stick together and help each other. And if anyone doesn't, he will punish them. This is when I realized we should have mentioned we had an actual plan by sticking behind. Or maybe not. It may not actually have changed anything. You should. Why didn't you mention that, though? You should have. Why, why didn't you? Because why didn't you tell your party members if you had a plan? Why didn't you tell them, hey, this could be a trap. We're going to we're going to wait out here. Because that, yeah, you kind of say, sound like assholes by not saying anything at all about that. Um, so since nobody has any cure, disease, potions, or spells, we have to look for a temple before we leave. We still don't know where anything is. Have you asked Have you asked GM to... No, no, no. It's coming. You don't. I mention I, a local who has a 19 charisma bard, can ask passerby for directions to the temple. They ignore you. Warlock casts a tech evil and good in the hope that the temple will visibly will, will be visible as a as a force of good from afar. He rolls, he succeeds. That's not that's not how that works. That's not, that's not how that works. That's not how that works, dude. The spell works. In fact, it works so well. And the city is so full of evil that it overloads your city. <laughs> succeeded the wall. He was a steady roll. If, if, if he succeeded, that, that is... <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, oh god. Okay. 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 Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. <laughs> We notice some thieves with matching bandanas are scouring the streets in groups. This is far too long of 10 or more. We can't handle fighting them. So we have to avoid them. So we are now on time, on a time crunch of escaping a gang and curing leprosy. <laughs> with nothing else to do, we wander around until we find a shop. <laughs> We asked the shopkeeper if she could direct us to the temple. No buy, no directions, says Steve in an accent. Party discusses and figures it wouldn't be wise to buy supplies and then go deeper into Thief City. <laughs> Time for me, a 19 charisma bar to step up. I suggest to the shopkeeper, I cast a suggestion, excuse me, on the shopkeeper. I ask her to kindly direct us to a temple of promise we'll be back and spend lavishly once we've got our plague sorted out. I roll a 19 plus 4. That's also not how that works. I hear you in your honeyed words. I can tell you the way for 200 gold pieces. 
That was the point I just up I just got up and left. <laughs> I've never seen a GM before or since who seems so uninter so uninterested in the act of role playing. The puzzles were just random chance and none of the traps even had any saving throws. It amazes me to this day that someone who puts so much effort into crafting visuals puts so little into actually running a tabletop session. Taking initiative was punished. No acting was punished. Acting was punished. It was like a railroad on a train made of needles. It was like Mr. Bones' wild ride the board game. Screw you, Steve. End post. <laughs> I read that and I was like, this is really dumb. So it makes it even better that you had to deal with it. <laughs> I just... Uh what uh what do you what do you think, Sammy? What do you what do you think about this? I um the fact that the the kind of the, the kind of piece de resistance of this whole thing is uh that he was a paid DM. He, they paid him six dollars. What was it a week? A month? I don't the fact they paid any at all. <laughs> uh like the people paid to be here, and that makes it even like I don't trust paid DMs and stuff like that. You um, absolutely can do. I think paid DMing is a perfectly reasonable and viable practice. Sure, I just I, think it. it I creates, agree, and it creates a it creates an atmosphere that I'm not comfortable with, which is fair. It's weird because like obviously you can do it if you enjoy it, and like I understand the concept of like. I, you know, if I could get a little money to like, you know, yeah. for the resources that I use and things like that, right? Or even if I'm trying to make this a career kind of thing, where yeah. it's like, you know, except you're, I, you're providing not, a service, but I'm gonna be honest, it's not going to be a career, even if you do. Pay the, the thing being is, it's 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 a it's it's because I've actually done professional GMing before like that. It granted, it was with an actual like. The issue being though is I it, it was with a company or was with the, you know whatever whatever you want to call it. I left that agency and company you know, because exactly because it is a very slippery slope and it creates a very again sensitive and fragile dynamic where again oh well i'm paying for a product so where is the line between a pro you know me getting my money's worth or me being a type of person that makes everything worse and shitty and uh, i don't know I, this 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 story here just this this wow this killed me. I couldn't. I can't. Uh, it's it's a real shame that we're ending on that one too. But it it broke <laughs> me. Yeah, I can't. I can't even. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm. I. I my mind is. I've. I, yeah. It literally has. It's literally broke me. My mind is. I mean, just, you just list off mistakes being made. Now working with your players, traps that don't have any. He already see. did. Like OP kind of summed it like, up pretty yeah, nicely. Everything was just like. <laughs> To be fair, the moment that I went to search something and he told me You just take damage. You take That's damage and you might be cursed, is the moment I've been like, no, go fuck yourself. And no, leave. well, I get I've literally experienced that. The cringe campaign I was a part of did exactly that. Except obviously we got hit with hundreds of damage instead of just three. But even that is still just like with no with essentially no save initially. We're like, no, you don't get a save. It's like, yeah, no, that's not happening. I would ne I I have not. And will not ever in any instance just walk into a place and be like, <laughs> this thing happens, now you take all this damage. No. Like, no, dude. I don't even I like again, sure, if there's an explosive, I get a save. I am not just taking that damage because you say so. No. No. Nope. Not gonna happen. No, <laughs> it's really strange, and I hate it when people people are literally going to just take that. You're literally just be like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, unless of course, unless I I I, wholefully, soulfully, completely, and utterly trust the GM. If the GM has already proven to me on a multitude of occasions that they know how to run games well, that they have our best interests at heart, that they're having fun, maybe. Maybe then I would accept like, okay, some, some weird shit happened and I just took that damage. But in no other scenario will I ever just be like, 
the first the first instance just be like yeah you just take damage no yeah it's fucking wild to me yeah you know i i think i think uh I need to. I think we need. We need to go now. I need. I need to go lay down. I think for a little I, while. I do. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, everybody, for for sticking with us this long. If you have, I'm also very sorry for for having for you all having to go through that with us as well. But if hey, I hope maybe you at least got some enjoyment out of the other utter torture and horrendous pain it, it dealt to me, me and Sammy today. Have a good day, you guys. We'll see you next time yeah. when we when we dive back down to the archive. We broke Adam, everybody. Bye. 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 I need to go. I need to, I need to go to sleep. <laughs>